Do memory cards fail? Let's find out. First, thanks to my friend Chris Reddy at PhotoReady.com for putting this poll together. We reached out and 4,344 people responded with their own experiences with memory cards, whether or not they had memory cards fail. And I want to say our polling data is not perfect, but as far as I know, nobody has done a bigger sampling of photographers' experiences with memory cards. So it's better than nothing. And frankly, it's the best that we have. Based on the people polled, about 47% of people had had a memory card failure, which means most people had never experienced a memory card failure, a slight majority. This is not the number of memory cards that failed because photographers often have more than one memory card. So most memory cards, the vast majority of memory cards do not fail, but almost half of photographers do at some point in their career experience a memory card failure. And it's mostly based on the number of shots that they've taken. People who've taken less than 10,000 shots, only about 36% of them reported any kind of failure. And you can see this number just increases as it goes until you get to people who've taken more than 1 million shots. More than three quarters of them experience a memory card failure at some point in their career. So if you haven't had a memory card failure, either you haven't taken many shots or you're up here and you're very lucky. Uh, we asked people how many card slots memory card slots their cameras had. Uh, slightly more than half of people had one camera that had two card slots, though maybe they had also had cameras with one card slot. About 46% of people only had cameras with one card slot. So it does get to be a little scary because these pictures are very important to people. Some of them might be professional pro pro photographers or there could just be very important personal memories. And 46% of people are standing the risk of losing the data because of what looks like to be an almost inevitable failure of a memory card at some point in your career. We examined the question, do some form factors fail more than others? For example, do SD cards fail more than XQD cards? And the answer seems to be, yeah. The old Sony memory stick cards failed uh, much more likely than, uh, say, an XQD card. This is based on the percentage of people reporting that they owned these memory cards versus reporting that that form factor failed. And this data is a little less than perfect because some people reported failures but didn't tell us which form factor it was, and they might have had multiple form factors. So it's not perfect data, but I do think the trend here is meaningful. XQD cards are indeed much less likely to fail. This does not mean that 8.6% of memory XQD cards will fail. You can just take it relative to the other data. Micro SD cards seem very likely to fail, and this kind of makes sense because they're small, easy to crack. SD cards, the same, but a little bit sturdier, and that's what we see reflected in the data. CF cards are harder and sturdier, but... Um, XQD cards and CFast cards here are very strong, but maybe a bigger factor is that they haven't had much of a lifespan. While SD cards have been around for 19 years now, XQD cards have really only been in use for a few years. So the longer that they're around, the higher percentage of them will eventually fail. And I'm sure in 10 years relative, the number of XQD cards failing will be much higher. Um, another reason that these other XQD cards and CFast cards uh, will fail less is that there are simply fewer counterfeits. There are lots of counterfeit SD card and micro SD cards out there where some manufacturer will just take some cheap internals and slap a Transcend or Lexar uh, sticker on there. And so you're buying crap, but you don't know it and nobody really knows it. And that really sucks. They're less likely to fact to try to counterfeit the less popular form factors like XQD cards. XQD cards might also have a higher percentage of professional users who take better care of their cards and don't just throw them in a bag somewhere. If we factor out the number of years, we can see these bars, which are only meaningful relative to each other. These bars kind of come together and XQD cards still fail the least, but uh, it, the difference between SD cards and XQD cards definitely shrinks. And to answer a lot of people's questions, do XQD cards fail? The answer is yes. We had a lot of people report that they already had XQD cards fail. So say, for example, the fact that the Nikon Z7 has an XQD card, it is less likely to fail than other types of cards, it seems, but it is not infallible. It's still a possibility. We asked people what sort of data they lost. Were they personal photos or were they business photos? And uh, right about 40% of people lost personal photos. And we had about 9% of people losing business photos, which especially if your business writing on it is particularly devastating. But to a lot of people, personal photos are important too. 
let's look at failures by memory card manufacturer because a lot of people said, hey, you you had a card failure because you used a Lexar card. They're terrible. My SanDisk cards are much better. By market share, SanDisk seems to hold about 47, 48% of the market, followed by Lexar, Samsung, Sony, Transcend, and PNY. There were a few other manufacturers, but there were much smaller percentages. Based on the number of people reporting that they owned the card and then reporting that that particular brand failed, we see that SanDisk and Lexar are about even with PNY. Samsung and Sony seem to be the most reliable, and Transcend cards seem to have failed more than others. Again, I can't attribute this entirely to the manufacturer since there are so many counterfeits out there. So take that for what it's worth, but there doesn't seem to be any evidence that Lexar fails more than, say, SanDisk. And in fact, in our own personal experience, we've had both types of cards fail as well as Transcend cards. Here's some best practices for avoiding losing your precious pictures. Get a camera with two card slots, use both those cards, and write pictures to both of those cards. You can leave a backup card in there all the time and just forget about it, just format it when it gets full or whatever, but at least you'll have that backup. If you buy a new card, test it out, make sure that it can handle the full capacity and that all that data reads back intact because many cards are, say, uh, 128 gig, labeled 128 gig, but they're actually 64 gig cards and they will lie to your operating system and they will allow you to write 120 gigs of data. But then when you go to read it back, only 64 gigs of it will be readable. That's just how they basically sell a cheaper thing for more expensive is by mislabeling the capacity. Go to stp.io slash test card. That's just a free tool that can help test your cards. If you have a failure or corruption on a card, dispose of that card. Do not continue to use it because you're just asking for trouble if you keep using it. If you do have a failed card, here's a free tool that you can use to try to recover it. If you're on Windows, look for QPhotorec on that page. If you want to learn more about how to avoid losing stuff, check out my disaster recovery video at stp.io slash bc. And a plea to manufacturers, let's, let's end the era of the memory card. Here is my proposal. In the next generation of cameras, build internal memory into the cameras. I suggest 128 gigs or 256 gigs. Put that memory on a loop, continuously backing up the photos and video that people capture and give them a single memory card slot also. They can continue their memory card workflow while you have that background uh, backup working. And if they want to pull the backup, they can connect a USB card to their camera. In the following generation, hopefully some people will get accustomed to working with the internal memory and we can get rid of that SD card entirely. We can build some redundancy checks uh, automatically overwriting or automatically um, failing out particular parts of the memory that might fail. You can make very reliable internal memory if you choose to do so. And it's time that we started to do that. We'd also protect people who forget their memory card. Hey, if you want to actually learn photography, go to Northrop.photo where we have video books, which are books with video in them and video training that will help make your photography better. Here's a 20% off coupon, fail 20. Standing Digital Photography with 14 hours of video, books on Lightroom and Photoshop, the photography buying guide, which will help you pick out your gear and 10 hours of video training in the art and science of photography, which goes deeper than we can on YouTube. Check it out. And if you're not happy, I'll just give your money back. If you want to write your experiences in the comments down below, I'd love to see it. If you're the type who thinks your single data point where you've never had a memory card fail means that nobody should have a memory card fail, you can say that. If you think that anybody who's had a memory card failure, it's their fault because you are in control of your own destiny and there's no such thing as luck. Okay, get it off your chest. Write that in the comments. Either way, I'd love to hear your experiences down below. Bye.